Hi guys, welcome to the workbench again. Uh, today I want to share with you something neat I've been working on. And before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about this quad I have right here. Now, this is not what I'm going to show you. This is just kind of to tell you where I started. And uh, this is a Comet 150. And I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the things I've worked on. I know some of you are my friends in real life. Some of you follow me on Facebook. Some of you follow me on Thingiverse or on YouTube. It just, I have people that know what I'm doing that just use different types of social media. So anyways, this is a Comet 150. And this is a 3D printed quadcopter design I did about six months ago. And I posted it to my Thingiverse page. Now, the goal with this was to make something that was uh, below the 250 gram mark with the battery, and that I succeeded. I also made it open source, at least, from the sense that you can use it as long as you're not using it for commercial purposes and post it to Thingiverse. Now, I always wanted to do this frame with some carbon in it, and the idea at the time was to do a carbon base plate, and I had a friend that was going to route it for me. I just never asked him. So... Uh, that would have been really easy to do because I could have just printed the canopy and made a flat carbon base plate that looked just like this. And uh, it would have been kind of like an XBR. But, uh, you know, it kind of, I got other projects, did other things, and so I moved on from that. So anyways, that's the Comet 150. Now, as you guys know, I released the SCX. I've been working on my own designs. I've been using Armitan Productions to help me get my designs out there, get my parts made in carbon, prototype things. And, you know, after SCX 200 went out, I've been working on other small projects, but I wanted to work on a new frame. So I decided, why don't I take the Comet 150 and turn it into carbon? And that's what I came up with right here. That's what you're looking at. And uh, this is a prototype. I actually have two different prototypes. And if you've been on my Facebook page, Space Cowboy Drone Design, you will have seen these two prototypes. I've posted a lot of pictures. So I'm calling this the Comet 170, and uh, it actually grew in size. So the original was designed for 3-inch props. Uh, you know, it was designed to be less than 250 grams. This one's not designed to be less than 250 grams. It's designed for 4-inch props and 2204 to 2206 size motors. So with this design, I'm just going to show you the basic parts that make up the construction, and we'll start with the base plate. And uh, this is where you're going to see the most of the Comet 150. The base plate. Now you can see the base plate's four millimeter carbon. It's nicely made by Armitan, and uh, this is where you're going to see the similarities. You can see it pretty much follows that same type of layout and form factor, where you've got all this webbing that kind of creates some strength. Now, in the the printed one, it was kind of necessary. In the carbon one, I could have done something different. But the idea was to take this and use it as the inspiration for the carbon version. So the only other thing that's different. I shouldn't say the only other thing, the whole thing's different really. But the big difference is, instead of going and printing the canopy like I had discussed earlier, I went ahead and did a whole new design for the for the top. And this is what I call the pod section of the frame, essentially. And what I did was, I came up with what I call a roll bar style pod. And there's a couple other quads out there that kind of follow this similar design philosophy. So it's kind of uh, a new a new idea out there. You won't see a lot of quads like this, um, but I wanted to put my own spin on it. So I've got two four millimeter carbon roll bars, as we'll call them, with two millimeter plates sandwiching both sides to hold the accessories. So up front we have our camera with the Fusion 5 style rubber mount. This is designed by Armitan, this part of it, the rubber. And uh, that's something they have available through their Armitan production store. So that's really neat because that gives the camera a nice rubber isolator. And also, there's a slot on the back where you can stick a screw and another sunken nut to lock the camera angle in. What I noticed is that based on the tolerance stack up of all these plates and standoffs going this way, there's actually a little bit of squeeze on the camera, which kind of gives it some retention. So you can still move this around, but you know, you could shake it and the camera doesn't really move. So I'm going to try running this without the screws to hold the camera angle in and see how it works. And I think it's gonna work good. And uh, you know, that's just less hardware to worry about. So that's the front of the pod. And then the back of the pod, you have your VTX. And you can see the VTX is mounted pretty much, you, you could say almost out in the open. It's got a single zip tie holding it to this plate. Now this frame is designed specifically for 
your VTXs that have the SMA pigtails on them. And uh, basically the pigtail was running all the way through the frame, through the bottom, comes out the back and mounts to the same plate that you're zip tying the, the, the VTX to. So that plate is sandwiched between these two side plates. So if you were to take one of these plates off, you could remove the VTX with the plate. So that's pretty easy to change. Now, the way the pod attaches to the base plate is pretty simple. So what I've done is, like I said, these are four millimeter roll bars. So there's tabs on the bottom. You got three tabs on each one, so it's six total. And the tabs drop into match matching ports in the carbon. So that locks it in and locates it, right? So if you were to have an impact, that's what's going to take the force of the impact and spread it through the frame. So you got six four millimeter wide tabs going down in there. So they're pretty beefy. They could hopefully take the abuse. Um, then you have these two smaller two millimeter plates that have sunken nuts, or some people call them PEM nuts, pressed in, and basically matching holes in the bottom of the plate here, 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 and here. And that's going to basically, once you put this thing in here and you lock the tabs into their slots, you put your screws through, that's going to hold it down. That's not going to meant to take a lot of force. Um, you're going to direct all the shear force into the tabs. Those are just going to be under tension, hopefully. So that's the frame. Um, you'll notice that the profile of the pod is kind of like a, a comet shape. It's real big at this end and kind of has a tail coming off. Um, you may also notice that these plates on the side, what I've done is I made them taller than the VTX so that if you were to kind of skim a gate as you hit right here, should divert up and hopefully it'll just hit the flexible part of your antenna and divert you from hitting the VTX and the SMA. Now, it's really hard to protect antennas, as you know. <laughs> they kind of have to be exposed to some degree so that you'll get good signal. So I felt this is good enough protection for what it is. I've seen a lot of quads that just have them sticking out the top with nothing to protect them. So hopefully this little ramp will kind of deflect it in a way that you're going to bend the antenna over before you break it. And thankfully also, since this is an SMA extension style BTX, these, uh, SMA, since they're not connected directly to the board, solid, you're not going to break your VTX. Your VTX should be well protected. If anything, your antenna is going to see damage, but hopefully not your VTX. So that's the design of it. As you can see, again, 4 millimeter thick roll bars, 20 millimeter standoffs. There's six of those standoffs, and they make up a, a, the clamshell or whatever you want to call it. Call it the pod. Snaps in. Now, I've actually designed two versions of this, and this part, the pod, is exactly the same, but the bottom plate is not. So here's the other version. Now, you can see it's a lot more traditional. So it doesn't have all the crazy webbing, doesn't have all the really thin cutouts that make the arms kind of thin. Now, don't get me wrong, this plate is really stiff. It doesn't feel like it's going to break very easily, but... When you start flying these things, you know that you're going to hit something. And if you're going to hit something, you know you're probably going to break something. No frame is completely impervious to breaking. So this is a lot more uh, traditional in that sense. And we've all flown frames like this. The arm is pretty wide, you know, wide enough that you could probably put a 30 amp ESC on there if you wanted to. But 20 should be good for the 4 inch. And it's a lot more traditional. And you can see it's just a basic, um, more or less an X pattern. Although the spacing on the arms is not a perfect X, this is more like an H quad in the motor layout department to make room for the pod in the center. So anyways, I am definitely going to release a version of this uh, just like this one to start with. So this is a 170 millimeter, and this is a prototype. It's my second prototype. But I'm going to release two versions. I'm going to release the one that looks like this in two different sizes, and that's going to be 180 millimeters and 210 millimeters. So basically what happened was when I put this thing together, uh, I found that I didn't think there was a lot of clearance between the props and different screws that hold together the pod. And it's really close. Now I'm using the Epic RC MN2204 2800KV motors. These are basically T motors, MN series. Um, they're really nice and I've been running them for a long time. In fact, I've been running the same exact set on several different copters that have gotten pillaged to build new copters. 
and with these motors and the 4-inch props I'm using, which are HQ 40 40x3s, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Everything fits. There's no prop strikes. There's nothing interfering. But it just made me uncomfortable seeing the props that close to hardware. So what I decided to do was to redraw the whole bottom plate, make it 180 millimeters, and I felt that would give it the necessary space it needed so that no matter what prop combination you use, no matter what motor combination you use, it'll fit. So that's going to be the difference between this and the ones I release. It'll be virtually imperceptible because no one's actually seen a 170 besides me, so no one will know the difference. And it's such a minor change that 10 millimeters across that diagonals, it's going to look the same proportions wise. It'll look just like this. Now, the other design that I released, or will be releasing, I should say, is a 210. Now, the 210, I did at the request of people on Facebook. Um, I posted all these pictures of this frame on Facebook probably about a week, a week and a half ago when I got it from Armitan Productions. And a lot of guys were like, hey, you should make a 5 inch version. You know, a 5 inch would be really cool, you know, yada, yada, yada etc. So I thought to myself, you know, that wouldn't be that hard. So I went ahead and I redrew another base plate with a 210 millimeter motor spacing for five inch props. And it'll be exactly the same pod in the center. So it'll fit the same components. It'll be the same relative size. And of course the arms are just longer. So proportionately, it'll be a little bit different looking. It'll have the same overall shape. The arms will be longer to put the motors and the props further away so that everything fits. So those are the two versions I'm going to release on Armitan Productions. And that brings me to some other cool news that I have to share. And, all right, so one last thing that I want to tell you guys about that uh, I think is kind of cool. Now I've been using Armitan Productions to help me sell my frames and anyone can upload to Armitan Productions and you can basically upload your files and kit them up and sell them. Um, and that's made it affordable for me to offer the frames to other people because quite honestly, you know, you don't know how many you're going to sell. And so investing in a big batch is a big risk. But I think things have been going well enough and I think there's been enough interest in things that I've decided to take some of the my own money basically and reinvest it into making the product a little bit cooler. So what I did was I talked to Armitan and... I have a special arrangement where I'm going to have some colored standoffs available for my kits. And basically how this works is Armitan Productions, normally what they do is they offer a bunch of standardized hardware. And for them, they have to go and make minimum orders of that hardware. And it's kind of expensive, but per a standoff or per a screw, it's not that bad. And they pass that on to us by allowing us to kit up our, our uh, make our kits with screws that are affordable. So I've been using their hardware. That's made it really easy, but you know, the selection it's, it's for them, it's not advantageous for them to go and buy a ton of different colors of standoffs and a bunch of different colors of screws and because they don't know what people are going to use, right? So they could go and buy a bunch of purple standoffs like I've been using and find out that no one really wants them. Everyone wants red or blue or green or something, and they end up with a bunch of hardware they can't use that they spent lots of money on. So, they don't offer it on Armitan Productions, and that's to keep it affordable for everybody that's using their service and to make it reasonable for them because they can't, you know, they give you such a value service that if they had to buy a bunch of hardware, they had a bunch of unused hardware, they'd have to somehow, you know, recoup that cost, you know? So, they, they don't do that, and rightfully so. But what I've done is because I thought there was enough interest in this frame and because of how well SDX 200 was received, I decided to take my own money and do a minimum order of standoffs. Now, I'm just going to start off with one color and just one size, and it's going to be specifically for this kit. And I've decided to purchase 20 millimeter orange anodized M3 standoffs. And you're going to need six of those in this kit. So... It's going to make it really nice. It's going to make it stand out. It's going to be unique to my store. It'll be in my parts listing. So um, I'm going to add that to the kits. So that's already in process. Um, just, you know, waiting for those to get made. I had to pay for about a thousand of those. So hopefully they go, <laughs> they go well and the kits go and they're gone. Um, but we'll see. 
Now, the only difference between those and what you see here is that I chose to go with just a standard diameter standoff. So it's the orange anodize that's going to be unique. You're not going to have the step down that adds more cost and more time to having a machine. So I just decided for this trial batch, we'll just go with the straight orange and uh, you'll still get the normal Armitan black anodized screws, but you'll have nice orange standoffs to make this pod kind of blingy. And the reason why I did that was because I feel like so far in the past, my kits have been kind of, um, they've been, my personal kits have been really nice because I've been buying standoffs for myself because I do take a lot of pride in my work and because I want to be unique. I do spend a lot of time, you know, say for example, this Armitan light pre-production SCX 200, I put red standoffs in it. It normally comes with black standoffs, but I want red because, you know, <laughs> this thing looks sweet. It's all red and black. Similarly, I did the same thing with this SCX 140. I put red standoffs in it because I had some red bottom Emacs motors and I thought that looked really cool. I've also got a SCX 140 here I built or took apart recently, but it has blue standoffs in it because it had blue bottomed motors. So, I really like to add a little bit of color to my builds. You know, I take a lot of pride in my work. It's almost a downfall because I'm gonna wreck this stuff and have to rebuild it. But anyways, I like I like to have a little bit of bling. So, you know, to make that something that you guys can have, and because I always put those type of things in my pictures and in my drawings, I think it's kind of a tease. I think it's finally time to offer that and that's why I went ahead and I purchased a thousand of them and they'll be kitted up with this frame to start with and if they're very popular maybe I'll think about purchasing different sizes and maybe include them in SCX. The only other thing they are going to be included with is the GoPro mounts because just like the Comet I'm using a 20 millimeter standoff there and because of what's available on Armitan Productions. I've been using a 16 millimeter standoff with a four millimeter spacer to make up 20 millimeters. And so this kit for the GoPro mounts, which is spaced 20 millimeters apart, will include two of the new standoffs. And you can see this is my last SCX that I built up. I haven't maidened it yet. But again, <laughs> I went ahead and bought orange hardware because I want it to be unique. I've got orange hardware everywhere, you know, standoffs wise, orange prop nuts. I've got these uh, Dow prop crystals that are orange so I just wanted this thing to look really cool you know I gotta admit maybe I'm not the best pilot but I do pride myself in my builds quite a bit so anyways I just want to let you guys know that's something cool I'm doing and you'll start to see that stuff on the store soon hopefully in another week or two uh, but right now I gotta get out there and start flying some more and get some practice so Thanks for sticking with me through this little workbench kind of overview of things I'm working on. And I hope you guys like some of this stuff. Go ahead and leave me your feedback or your comments. You can, you know, like my page. I have a Facebook page called Space Cowboy Drone Design. If you're not aware, that's usually where I post things first. And it's also where I share my progress on all the projects I'm working on. The videos I like to do from time to time, but obviously they, they take up a little bit more time, so they're going to be a little bit infrequent compared to my Facebook posts. But anyways, thanks for checking it out, and I hope you guys like it. Bye.